right? That's what it sounds like soloed. And over here, I have an example of it implemented in a drop. So, as you can tell, very good for hybrid trap, um, hard style, like EDM trap made by the guys like Jupe, KRNE, Myrns, you know, like Stalloys, I mean, all those guys. And, yeah, just very useful preset to have around, alright? So, right now, I'm going to get out my MIDI for recreating all right we have the midi over here in serum i have an initialized preset and as you can see as i play the sound it is just the standard saw wave from serum all right so let's get into this all right i'm gonna go over here to serum we are going to go and just hop right into it all right so for our first wavetable, um, it's actually going to be a custom wavetable that I have made. Um, but once again, the preset is in the description. If you want the wavetable, if you want to recreate the sound, just drop down in the description, pick it up. The wavetable will be included in the patch. All right, so I'm going to go to user and we're going to go to Farce wavetable one. Nice. All right. And as you can tell, this this patch, this wavetable, has a ton of concentration in the upper harmonics. Which is usually something I like when I'm making, you know, like trap leads or, you know, like dubstep EDM type sounds, you know. Um, it just usually turns out pretty well. So, what I'm going to do is raise the unison up to 16, alright, and we're getting this very wide sound now, and that is not what we want at all. So, we're just going to take the detune, turn it all the way down, so we get this hard hitting sound right there, alright. That is good. Um, wavetable, once again, should be on 1, unison should be at 16, detune at 0, and up here, we're going to turn our course to 0.17. So, there, 0.17. That's not going to, you know, like, make too much of a difference right now. You're not going to be able to hear such, like, a massive change. But in a second, when we get into our um, warp mode, um, you'll be able to tell that it's making a giant difference. All right. So, before we go into our warp mode for oscillator A, we're just going to hop over here to oscillator B, and we're going to pick out our wavetable, alright? We're going to go to analog, and we're going to go to basic mini, alright? And basic mini, we're just going to go up to weight position 2, um, and there we go. We have this more like sine wave shaped um, wavetable. And this is good because it doesn't have too much information, which will mean that when we come over here and do FM uh, modulation, it won't get too messy, all right? So first things first, we're actually going to turn the volume all the way off for this oscillator um, because it's just going to be there to you know, be the, the host for the frequency modulation. And over here, we're going to go to our unison, turn it up to 4. And with the detune, we're actually going to turn this all the way down also, because if you don't, then, you know, that detuned widened sound will actually carry through with the frequency modulation, and that's not something we want, all right? Um, from there, you are pretty much good um, with oscillator B, so now we're just going to go over here real quick to our A warp mode, and just um, do the frequency modulation real quick. So you're going to click FM from B, Frequency Modulation, um, and right here, um, all you have to do is double click, and you're just going to type in 42, that'll bring it to 
42% right there, and you're still getting a very wide sound. Um, you know, it's the right timbre, it has the right feel. But it's just super wide, and as you can obviously tell, that's not what we want, you know. So how do we fix that, alright? How you're going to fix that is you're going to come down here to LFO1, alright? And first thing is first, we're going to set it to envelope. Um, because we're all going to be using it as an envelope, we want this, this pattern to run out every single time it hits a new MIDI note, alright? And from there, we're just going to drag the point all the way to the left, and then we're going to like take the curve and drop it like that. Alright, and from here, what are we going to do? Well, our volume on oscillator A, we're going to turn that all the, down, all the way down, and we're going to put the LFO on there and make sure it's going from 0 to 100. Alright, and we have that done. That's good. And just playing now. That sounds, that sounds good. That's the type of sound we're going for. All right. Now, filter, we're going to turn it on. We're going to leave it on our MG Low Pass 12. And for the cutoff, um, I'm just going to type it in. 4,644 hertz is what it should be at. And we're only going to be selecting oscillator A because no sound is actually coming out of oscillator B. Um, and then our LFO is going to go on to this cutoff, and you want it to go from, you know, that 4,644 hertz all the way up, so it should be, um, at like 20 cent, 20 percent, okay. Um, and that's all you need to do for the, um, oscillator tab, so now we're gonna go to the FX section and speed through this real quick. Alright, so with hyperdimension, what we're going to do is hyperdimension adds a lot of space and completes a lot of sounds. Um, but the initial like um, preset that they have for the hyperdimension is going to be too much for this preset. So first thing is first, we are going to turn our detune down. We're going to turn it to 7%, and our mix will still be too much at that point. So we're going to drop it to 21%, all right? And for distortion, what we're gonna do is we are going to go and put it on a soft clip um, distortion. And right here with our filter, we're gonna put it on pre, all right? Um, for our pre, we're gonna put the filter type all the way to a high pass. So our higher frequencies are coming through the filter. And frequency, um, all we're going to have to do here is you're just going to type in 141 for the frequency, and our Q point should be 0.1, and there you go, that's the filter shape you want. Now take the drive, turn it all the way up, and there you go, it's warming up the sound, um, and that's what we want. So now for our phaser we're gonna take a phaser we're actually gonna take the rate all the way up um take the depth all the way down frequency all the way down um and for our phaser's wetness we're gonna drop it to around 25 percent i'm actually not sure what i had so let me just check this real quick i don't want to be totally wrong 32 percent it was close enough yeah, so drop it to 32% instead. There you go. Uh, and this is what it's doing to the sound. It's just adding, you know, a bit more timbre to it. Um, and now what we're going to be doing is we have our phaser, we have our distortion, and our hyper slash dimension. So now we're going to go over here and we are going to go with some delay. All right. So for our delay, our delay is what's going to be adding that metallic sound, all right? You know, like when you have a, 
a microphone and you put it next to the speaker and it makes that screeching noise. That's basically the effect we're going for here. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to go here, hit link, drop the times to 1 over 64. Um, once you have that, um, set it to ping pong. And this is what you should be hearing. Alright, and as you can tell, the, that transient, like, at the end part, where it's just, you know, oscillating really fast, and it's creating that, you know, like, reverb, kind of, like, distorted sound that you would hear if you, like, put your microphone right next to the speaker. Um, yeah. But we don't want all that to be present, obviously. That wouldn't be good for the sound. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go here to our delay, turn the feedback all the way down, and then we're going to stick our um, LFO 1 onto it. Um, so we're going to take the LFO, and we want it to be going 0 to 70. So there we go. All right, and now... We have the sound the way we want it, it's just not hitting hard enough, as you can hear. So we're going to add a compressor, and we're going to do like the obvious thing to do, and just boost it. Um, no, not the mix, the gain. We're going to put 7.3 decibel boost on our gain, and now it's popping. Yep, it sounds right. There we go. Alright, so for our reverb, um, what we're going to do here is Paul preset is too big, so we're going to go and put it on plate. Our size needs to be 19, and all of these other um, parameters should be good, so just leave them there. And now the mix can drop down a little bit. I'm going to bring it to 14%. And then it just takes away just a little bit of the reverb so it's not getting muddy. Alright. And now, final step. We're going to be putting on our EQ. And there is nothing really like too drastic being done here. Um, we're just going to leave the lows and mids as they are. And all we're going to do is over here on the higher band... We're going to take this high shelf, and we're just going to boost the gain by 4.6 decibels. 4.6, and now our sound is done. Yeah, we can put it in for our first couple bars and see how it transitions into this drop. Um, yeah. And that's like it. It wasn't, you know, too insanely complex of a patch. Um, and here we go. Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's the whole entire patch. Once again, I have left a download for the patch in the description. Download it, go check it out, and while you're downloading it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this, more Serum tutorials, more FL Studio stuff. Um, once again, just thank you for watching. If you made it this far, um, I'm just very grateful to you. Um, thank you for all the guys that just stuck through the entire video. and. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.